بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه علوم القرآن Today إن شاء الله تعالى Uh, we'll start the chapter of Ijazu al Quran. Al Ijaz in al Quran. The Al Nadmu al Habiru, the uh, abiyat will be from 150 to 153. 150 to 153. And then we'll go through the Sharah, inshaAllah ta'ala. What mean al Ijaz? Al-I'jaz is the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. That's when we need Al-I'jaz. Al-I'jaz. The miraculous nature of the Qur'an. Uh, I would like to see how exactly in English how they they say it if there's a proper uh, term in english yes um, i mean uh Wow, something very far. Okay, maybe I don't know. It's not what it came in the in the dictionary of Al-Mani at all, of course. Said it's crippled or something. Al-I'jazu in the Quran. Al-I'jazu is kind of a challenge to produce like the Qur'an. And Al-Qur'an yu'jizu whoever who want to challenge that. Yu'jizu make, make someone incapable to produce like the Qur'an. So it is an open challenge to reproduce like the Qur'an. This open challenge and as never was met or challenged, it becomes miracle. So al ijazu is not miracle. From a'jaza. A'jaza is like make someone incapable. Which is we're going to study this because some of the Mu'tazila, they, they have some, some odd explanation which is very off the, uh, the meaning of the ijaz. So al ijazu is someone has the eagerness to challenge a challenge that be, he will not be able to achieve it, to attain it, to fulfill it. That's from A'jaza. يَقُولُ أُنْبِيكَ مَاذَا قِيلَ فِي الْإِعْجَازِ فِي جُمْلَةِ الْقُرْآنِ بِالْإِجَازِ أُنْبِيكَ I will let you know. What it has been said in the matter or the subject of Al-I'jaz. Fi jumlat al in the Qur'an, in a very concise way, bil-I'jazi. Tanawwa'at aqwaluhum fi awjuhi, I'jazihi wal haqqu lil mustanbihi. They had different sayings about the different way how to present the I'jaz. And the truth is, it's going to be clear for the one who's mustanbih, the one who reflect and attentive. أن القرآن معجز Now the question, what is the part of the Qur'an that has this miraculous nature? When you say miraculous nature, what is a miracle first? We have to define what is a miracle. And what are the type of the miracle? And what type of uh, miracle that the Qur'an will fit in? What? Before to continue here, so let's answer first this question. Let's answer this question. 
القرآن الكريم هو المعجزة الكبرى لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Quran is the biggest miracle, let's say miracle, in the way that I have explained. Huh? The way that I have explained. And then we're going to define what is the mu'jiza, to be uh, easy. So the Quran al-Kareem is the greatest miracle revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-mu'jiza tu zahiratun takarrarat fi hayat al-anbiya salawatu allahi alayhim li takuna dalilan ala sidq da'wahim da'wahim al-nubuwa da'wahim al-nubuwa so al-mu'jiza it is no one to be given to the prophet as a proof and evidence to the message that they convey قال uh, الله سبحانه وتعالى said uh, in the story of موسى وفرعون قال أولو جئتك بشيء مبين what if I'll bring you something that is so clear that is a miracle that is going to be proof of what I'm saying the other قال إن كنت جئت بآية فأتي بها إن كنت من الصادقين if you truly have a sign if you truly have a miracle show it so he throw his stick and it turned into flesh, into snake flesh. That's one of the big mu'jizah. And the mu'jizah depends on, on, it varies, depends on the society. We'll explain it that. The mu'jizah depends on the society. The challenge usually need to fit the knowledge of the people of that society to understand, to comprehend, that is a challenge. Rather. So the miracle or the mu'jizat are being given to the Prophet to have it as, as proof and evidence to the truthfulness for the message that they convey. The difference between al-mu'jizatu wa al-karama, we have studied in Aqidah, but it's good to mention. Al-karama is what miracle can happen to righteous people or normal people. Some people, they call it miracle when it's not a miracle, it's a decree from Allah. A plane crashed, there's one survivor. Say it's a miracle. It wasn't a miracle. He was not supposed to die. <laughs> so that's a degree from Allah. al karamatu is, subhanAllah, what happened in certain people, like righteous people, they happen to them miracle. We call it karama, we don't call it mu'jiza. Karama is, is being an honor being given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Karama is like takrim, honor, being granted the favor. al karamatu is given to righteous people. Ours can be given to people to help them persevere. Okay. In Iman. For example, the story of the lady who was carrying her baby and she was going to be thrown in the fire, you know, uh, and holding on her belief in Al-Ukhdud. When she doubt because she's scared from her baby, the baby spoke in the cradle. It was a miracle. It was a miracle helping this lady to persevere on his Iman. So people that will have miracle signs, Allah helping them to persevere, Allah helping them to boost their Iman, etc. And does not mean when someone has a karama, he has like greater than anybody else. Like some sect, they think, you know, the ranks of piety depends on the karama that you get. No such a thing. Because the ranks is based on the striving you offer in the sake of Allah, on your iman, on how much you contribute in the way of the goodness, not on, you know, the miracle that happened on your hand. Because some of the miracle, it might not be actually a miracle from Allah, it might be from the shaitan and jinn. Think people are miracles. 
Al-Mu'jiza is in the hand of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi or the Prophet that they have Mu'jiza. The difference between Al-Karama and Mu'jiza, the Karama, if it happen, it can't happen out of the control of the person and he cannot recall it back. Someone, for example, he's seen he has a cloud over his head in the plain desert, shaded him. They say, what? They say, this is it's a miracle. I mean, this is a karama from Allah. Now, the next day, he's walking with people with him. He said, can you get us the, the, the umbrella again or the cloud? He said, I cannot. I cannot control it. For the prophets, they can produce the same miracle over and over because it comes with a message. That's the difference. One is a favor and honor, the other one is a proof to the message. For the mu'jiza to become mu'jiza, three aspects or conditions need to be fulfilled. For the mu'jiza to become mu'jiza, three conditions need to be fulfilled. First, قَالَ أَنَّهَا أَمْرٌ خَارِقٌ لِلْعَادِ Something to be supernatural. Something to be not that what people are used to. First, is like over the capability of people to do. Therefore, it cannot be explained based on the what people get used to. For example, having someone has a cloud, he does not have an umbrella, he does not have anything. It cannot be explained. So things happen, but without the normal condition. Someone has a rock and, and water comes out of it. This water cannot come out from this rock. There is no... A spring ended, it does nothing. So this is supernatural, not normal. So that's the first thing. The second condition. The thing, for example, is also open, can be, uh, let's say, is, uh, uh, how can I say it, in the level to be challenged, or like there's ability to challenge such a thing, ability like into, let's say, uh, in, in the frame of mind, you say, yeah, someone can change, like the Quran. The Quran, what is strange in it is, is the way how it formed. But they read it and they understand it. And whoever reads it says, yes, I can do such a thing. So it's open for the challenge in a way that someone, he will believe that he can challenge it. Isa, alayhi salam, he uh, heals the leopard, for example. Some doctor said, yes, I mean, we can find the right medication if we work and we can do the same. For Musa alayhi uh, salam, Fir'aun, he brought sorcerer. They said, yeah, they can do it. And people, they saw it really, you know, turn into snakes. So the miracle is first supernatural, but it can be, there's people, is open for them to challenge. They believe that they can do it. For example, things that are not open to challenge, is like he given an example. You find like, you know, a kid, for uh, you know, four years old to challenge him with the championship, the world championship of uh, uh, of boxing. To the meat, we can say, say this is not challengeable. I mean, this is not possible. So we're talking about things that they have balance in it, that the people believe that they can do the challenge. It. You see the example of Pharaoh with his uh, sorcerer against Musa. The example of the people in the time of Isa alayhi salam, 
they think that they can change because, and I said in the beginning, uh, uh, the, the challenge or the miracle is really comes with the society. So in the time of Fir'aun and Musa alayhi uh, salam, it was very well known magic around them. So it was like the knowledge, the science that they have, that they master the, 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 the magic. So Allah sent with Musa with something that they do master. It's a miracle, supernatural, but within their field. In the time of Isa is known at that time to have like, subhanAllah, kind of uh, medicine being around and people are, are fond of such a thing and developing such techniques. So when Isa is come to heal the uh, the sick and things, and then to bring that people uh, back to life, that was, you know, uh, supernatural. But it is in the field that they are expert in it. Uh, look, subhanAllah, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, his people, they were skilled in, in ilm al kalam, in logic, philosophy. So he dealt with them with the same language, with logic and analogy. He looking at the at the moon, he said, This is my God, and then he disappeared. He said, Oh, I will not, I don't like those who disappear. So he makes them think in a logic way. That's why he broke all the idol and he left one. He said, Ask him. Then they realize, how can we ask him? He doesn't speak. So this is cannot be God. So arrogance make him to turn against Ibrahim. But it was Ibrahim. This is our evidence that we gave to Ibrahim to challenge these people. So the way of the challenge comes with the, what that society at that time is expert with. We're talking about miracles. Applied no. punishment is not miracle. What? So this is the second condition. The third condition, أَنَّهَا أَمْرٌ سَالِمٌ عَنِ الْمُعَارَضَةِ That this challenge is impossible to be challenged. It's open for the challenge, but no one will challenge it. Remember that Musa alayhi salam, remember Isa alayhi salam, and then the Qur'an. So if you apply the three conditions on the Qur'an, it was supernatural in the way he was formed, constructed. It was using the language and the same, subhanAllah, uh, uh, a grammar, the same structure of the language that the Arab they use. So then it's open for challenge. Third, never was challenged then it is a miracle. It is mu'jiza. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked first in Surah Al-Isra to bring your Qur'an like it. قَالْ لَوْ جَتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُ بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا If the jinn and the ins they all gather to produce a Qur'an like it, they will not be able, even though they will be all together, allies, jinn and ins. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged them. Okay, maybe the whole Qur'an is too much for you. He, he took it down to 10 surahs. أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَىٰ قُلْ فَأْتُ بِعَشْرِ سُوَرِ مُفْتَرَيَاتِ مِثْلِ He's saying that he's forging a lie, then bring ten surah like it. Then Allah challenged them with one surah in the beginning of the Qur'an. فَإِنْ كُنْتُ فِي رَبِّ مِنْ نَزَلَ عَبْنَا فَأْتُ بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ One single surah as small as two lines, Surah Al-Kawthar. And they truly tried because they hated Islam. They hated the Prophet. They being like fighting an enemy to the Prophet. If it wasn't done then, it would never happen 
from them. If it wasn't done in the time, those who are like the most expert and eloquent in the language, the Arabic language, then it could not be done after that. Impossible. And open to challenge to the end of time. The mu'jiza has two types, a tangible one and his aqliya, uh, intellectual one. The one that is tangible, it only serve, it only serve as a proof in the time of the prophets. The stick of Musa, the staff of Musa, it seems to exist now. It is in the museum of Topkapi. Yeah? Those who want and visit in Turkey, in Istanbul, you can see it. We said this is the sick of Musa. But it does not turn into snake. Stop turning into snake after Musa is gone. So that hasiyya, tangible, only works in the time of the prophets. The Qur'an is very specific and unique. Why? Because the mu'jiza, it goes forth to the end of time and open for the challenge. Since the Prophet Sallallahu went to meet his, the Most High Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, till now. All the tangible miracle, they end, they roll with the, with the end or the, uh, subhanAllah, the death of the prophets. Except of the Qur'an, because subhanAllah, aqli, intellectual, written, is a book, is read, is studied, is analyzed. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن حديث رواه البخاري عن أبي عن أبي هريرة ما من قال ما من الأنبياء نبي إلا أعطي ما مثله آمن عليه البشر. He said every single prophet was being given, you know, a proof for people to believe. وإنما كان الذي أتيته but for me, what is being given to me, wahyan, a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فأرجو أن أكون أكثرهم تبعا يوم القيام. I'm hoping to be the most one or who going to have the more followers in the Day of Judgment. Because every proof that being given to a prophet, it only played the role or served during his life. And ended there. The proof of the Quran, subhanAllah, it goes to the end of time. So the Prophet said, wishing to have more followers possible because of what he's been granted as an honor to have the Quran. Of course, the Prophet had many other miracles. And in the book of Al Khasa'is, of Al Imam Al Suyuti, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned every prophet or all the miracles that the previous prophet had, the Prophet وسلم, had the equivalent of them, all of them. Every prophet. If you study all the miracles that happened in the time of the Prophet, وسلم, you find them like equivalent of all what the, every prophet had. But we no one talk about them because they were in the true proof of his message. The proof of his message is the Quran, which is the greatest of the miracles. Al Khasas. Khasas al Kubra.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the recitation of the ayat is the proof enough. Look what he said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ankabut. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْآيَاتُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ آية العنكبوت 50-51 And they said uh, لَوْ لَا أُنزِلْ عَلَيْهِ uh, If he had received miracle from his Lord is like, you know, we will not believe till we'll see miracle. قَالَ قُلْ إِنَّمَا Tell them that these miracles are in the hand of Allah. وَإِنَّمَا أَنَّ النَّذِيرُ الْمُبِينُ I'm only a clear warner to you. أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ It was not enough for him. That we have sent down to you a book that it recited to them. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it's enough for them this book to be for them a miracle. فأخبر سبحانه أن الكتاب الكريم الذي أنزله الله والذي يتلى عليهم آية من آيات الله كاف في الدلالة على صدق نبوته. It's enough miracle, it's enough sign for to justify and prove the truthfulness of the message of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Another ayah قال الله سبحانه وتعالى in Surah At-Tawbah وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ استجارك. If any of the disbelievers he ask, you know, استجارك is mean ask for peace to listen what you have um, what you have it has revealed to you فَأَجِرْهُ grant him this peace grant him, you know, safety till he listen the, the words of Allah so the words of Allah are, are subhanallah enough dalala enough dalala miracle and proof for the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we were sharing a video with the youth it's a very short video um, a man from england who uh, uh, his neighbor on the plane left a book then he left and he took the, the, the book to the person and said, you left his book. So this person told him, you can keep it. Please keep it. He said, every time I open the book, I read, I cry. He said, and he said, this book was the Quran. <laughs> said that I want to know more about this book. Then he went to ask. Then what he found, they... They uh, he asked him to meet a person in an office. He went to that office. He find the man that he was his neighbor in the plane. But he's saying, I've been reading the book at least two times a day. He said, one thing I can say about this book. It had the truth. It's like someone who's in a desert and he needs a map. He said, I am realizing that this book is the map for the life. Someone who never read the Quran before. And subhanAllah, he came to the path of Allah by reading the book of Allah. That's why many people, they ask, he say, what is the best way to do da'wah? He said, give them the book of Allah. Allah will talk to them. Don't be like, think that we need to be eloquent and, uh, you know, and have all the proofs. <laughs> Just give the Quran. Even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to his servant and, uh, you know, to his creation by his own words. With the language he understands. I mean, someone has an Arabic and English translation, they just take it and they can throw it away. Would that be a problem? Well, think of the good thing. If you throw it away, he would be would beat him, him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Huh? I said, now, nowadays you have this English behind Yeah. Just give it back. Yes. This person, he didn't even give it to him, he forget it. So when he told them, you forget your book, the person, he said, please keep it. Allah wants to guide this man. Yeah. 
No, it's not the subject. That's the methane different. All the Quran is a miracle. قال وقال الذين كفروا لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغو فيه لعلكم تغلبوا The disbelievers at the time of the Prophet they were like forbidding each other to listen to the Quran because they feel like it's like a magic لعلكم تغلبوا والغو فيه and say word of distortion you know to divert people from it that this is the only way you can win. وكانوا يسعون جهدهم للحيلولة بين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبين من يأتي من وفود العرب إلى مكة ومن ذلك ما جاء في سير أو في سيرة ابن هشام. They use always any visitor to Mecca, they will uh, you know kind of uh, stop them in a way or intercept them to talk to them about this crazy man in Mecca, to not listen to him. And I can read for you the hadith, which is very good as uh, in, in, uh, by studying the ulum al-Quran. قدم الطفيل مكة ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بها الطفيل بن عمر he entered Mecca and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was in Mecca. فمشى إليه رجال من قريش so the people of Quraysh, they have like groups. In the time of the season of the Hajj people, they start to come. And the Prophet ﷺ, the biggest action of the da'wah, he used to do in the, on the time of the season of the Hajj. He's looking for a home for the da'wah. That's where he met the Ansar. So, and he used to make his da'wah for everyone who comes. The people of Quraysh, they put groups to counter his action. He's not bothering them. Subhanallah. So, Qala at tufayl while he's walking, a group from uh, Quraysh came to him. And at tufayl kana sharifan sha'iran labiba. He used to be a noble person in his people, among his people, a poet and smart. فَقَالُوا لَهُ يَا تُفَيْلْ إِنَّكَ قَدَمْتَ بِلَادَنَا وهذا الرجل الذي بين أظهرنا قد أعضل بنا قد أعضل بنا وقد فرق جماعتنا وشتت أمرنا وإنما قوله كالسحر said yeah to fight you came to our home you came to our town we want to warn you about this man he's around us قد اشتد أمره أعضل بنا I mean he's making a trouble for us and he's dividing between us, between our groups, between our people. He's causing division. amrana, And he's making like issues and problems around us. So like this is presenting someone who's a fitness, someone who's like, you know, dividing between people. We want to warn you. He's a speech like magic. يُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ الرَّجُلِ وَأَبِي He's dividing and separating between the man and his own father. وَبَيْنَ الرَّجُلِ وَزَوْجَتِهِ And he's dividing and separating men, you know, spouses from each other. وَإِنَّمَا نَخْشَ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ قَوْمِكَ مَا قَدْ دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا Which really concern to not be, you know, touched by this spell or by this magic. And such a thing will touch you or touch any one of your people. So be careful. Because we've been suffering from this uh, magic, from this, you know, fitna. Don't talk to him and don't listen anything from him. I said, I'm not going to talk to this man. I'm not going to even listen to him. And said, to the point that I block my ears with a cotton. He put cottons. Do not listen to the Prophet. 
فَرَقًا مِنْ يَبْلُغُنِي شَيْءٌ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ I was scared, I was frightened that he going to contaminate me or to hurt me with what he's saying. وَأَنَا لَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَسْمَى فَغَدَوْتُ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ I get to the masjid, I'm talking about the Kaaba. فَإِذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي عِنْدَ الْكَابِ I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم standing and praying by the Kaaba. فَقُمْتُ مِنْهُ قَرِيبًا So I was like close to him. فَأَبَى اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُسْمِعَنِي بَعْضَ قَوْلِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me to hear some of his saying. فَسَمِعْتُ كَلَامًا حَسَنًا I heard something beautiful. فَقُلْتُ فِي نَفْسِي وَاثْكَلَ أُمِّي وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَرَجُلٌ لَبِيبٌ شَاعِرٌ مَا يَخْفَ عَلَيَّ الْحُسْنُ مِنَ الْخَبِيرِ He said, be my, be, be I mourned, I be mourned by my mother. I'm a person or a poet. I, I have, you know, I, I can't discern between the good and the bad. فَمَا يَمْنُعْنِي أَنْ أَسْمَعْ مِنْ هَذَا الرَّجُلُ What will hold me back from not listening to this man? فَإِنْ كَانَ الَّذِي يَأْتِي بِحَسَنْ قَبِلْتُهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ قَبِيحًا تَرِجُ If it was something good, why not? I'll accept it. If it was bad, I would reject it. قَالَ فَمَكَثُّ حَتَّى انْصَرَفَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَى بَيْتِ I stayed till the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم left to his home. And I followed him. حَتَّى إِذَا دَخَلَ بَيْتَهُ دَخَلْتُ مَعَ لَيْهِ فقلت يا محمد إن قومك قد قالوا لي كذا وكذا سيد يا محمد your people this is what they have told you فوالله ما برحوا يخوفونني أمرك حتى سددت أذني بكرسوف لألا أسمع قول they said they keep frightening me you know of you I mean what you might cost me to the point that I blocked my ears with the curtain ثم أبى الله but Allah refused but for me to hear some of your speech while he was praying. قال فسمعت قولا I heard things beautiful. فأعرض علي أمرك Tell me what is your, your message? What are you calling for? فعرض علي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وتلا علي القرآن The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him and he recited Quran. قال فلا والله ما سمعت قولا قط أحسن منه by Allah, I never heard such a thing or more beautiful thing that I heard, have have heard from the Prophet. And no matter that is so balanced, so great, like what he has told me. He accepted Islam on the spot. He accepted Islam on the spot. And from those who enter Islam just by listening to the Quran. Uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, wa Usaid ibn Hudayr, wa Sa'd ibn Mu'ad wa ghayrihim. Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he read, you know, that uh, Sahifa, he took it from his sister, that's it, it changed. Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, when he came, so Musa ibn Umayyad told him, listen, if you don't like it, reject it. If you accept it, let's talk. You told them, okay, recite. So the Sahaba, they said, we saw Islam in his face before even he speaks. He starts, subhanAllah, you know, someone frowning and, and mad and ready to, to fight. And suddenly his face starts to change. And you see light coming. And then, <laughs> so he accepted Islam. You know. You know, there is a, a nice saying. There's someone who, who he, he was an ambassador from Europe in a Muslim country. And he accepted Islam. So they asked him, he said, you know, mashallah, you have accepted Islam. How, you know, why you think other people, they don't accept? This is an example. He said, reading the Quran, brought me to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he said, I believe it's not, you know, that the Quran is not able to get to the people. It's the people who refuse to listen to the Quran. 
So he said, when someone refused something and he decided that this is not good, how can that good thing get to his heart? And it's a beautiful thing because they refuse. So subhanAllah, you see, if you look back in time of the Prophet, all of them, they refused. The only one who, who really listened to the Quran and it, the Quran, <laughs> actually the hadith is here, maybe it's better to read it. Yeah, I read the hadith, it's beautiful. Um, the hadith of Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir. Qal, uh, Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir, he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir was someone who was like a poet, someone, uh, a person with knowledge, with wisdom. And Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir, by the way, he's the father of Khalid ibn al-Walid. So they told him, he said, I will go talk to him to stop this nonsense, what he's doing. So when he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let him speak. He told him, did you finish? He said, yes. He told him, listen. Then he, he read the beginning of Surah Fussilat. If you go listen, read it. Read it while you're listening to it. You see the power of the Quran. So when he came to the ayah, قَالَ فَأَنذَرْتُكُمْ صَائِقَةً مِثْلَ صَائِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ I'm warning you, a sa'iqa, a blast, like being sent on Ad and Thamud. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira jumped to, to stop the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from speaking. He covered his mouth. Why? Because you know the Prophet only said the truth. Warning, a blast, a punishment like Ad wa Thamud, and the Arab, they know who is Ad and Thamud. He stopped him, told him, Kafa ya Muhammad, stop. And he left, perplexed. Bewildered, amazed. And when he went back to the people of Quraysh, the leaders, Abu Jahl, قال, ماذا أقول فيه? They said, tell us something. Tell us something that it please your people. قال, ماذا أقول فيه? فوالله ما منكم رجل أعلم مني بالشعر ولا برجزه there's no one, no one among you. He is more knowledgeable than me in the poetry and in the rhymes of the Arabic language or in the qasaid, how to put them together. No one of you, he said. And no one among you knows better than me the poetry or the poem said by the jinn. Al-Walid al mughira has even knowledge of the share of al-jinn. Wallahi ma yashbahu alladhi yaquluhu shay'an min hadha. He said, everything that you have heard from the best of it being said, what I heard from the Prophet, nothing is alike. Nothing. Wallahi innahu la qawluhu li qawlihi la halawa. In his saying, there's a sweetness. Wa inna alayhi la talawa. And it has kind of a coat of a beauty. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَحْتِمُ مَا تَحْتَهُ And everything, any type of saying, and it destroy it. Cannot challenge the Qur'an, cannot stand at the level of the Qur'an. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَعْلُوا وَمَا يُعْلَى عَلَيْهِ And the more you hear it, it goes up. It's in the highest level and nothing can, can surpass him. This, ya akhwani, a disbeliever that what he said in the Quran. That's by the way, one of the most beautiful things has been said about the Quran in the time of the Prophet by someone who is a disbeliever. Qala Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl. Qala wallahi la yarda qawmuka hatta an taqula fi. He said, Your people they're not gonna be pleased. They will not accept such a saying. This is a shame that what he's saying. قال فدعني أفكر let me think so let me think is to come up with the plot not with the truth 
قال إن هذا إلا سحر يؤثر إن هذا إلا سحر البشر. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent down the ayat in Surah Al-Mudathir about this man who denied and rejected the truth that himself he praised it, he complimented. But Subhanallah, because of the arrogance, because of the chauvinism among his people, what led him to deny the Quran. And by doing that, Subhanallah, is going to be cast where? In Saqar. Sa'uslihi Saqar. Wa ma adraka ma Saqar. La tubqi wa la tadalla wahatun al-bashar. That's it. The story of Al-Walid al-Mughira that I'm sharing with you. And you can see more details in the story in Surah Al-Muddath. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in this surah, uh, Surah Al-Muddathir, ayah 18 to 24. إنه فكر وقدر فقتل كيف قدر ثم قتل كيف قدر ثم نظر ثم عبس وبصر ثم أدبر واستكبر فقال إن هذا إلا سحر يؤثر إن هذا إلا سحر to the end of the ayat there's a lot of saying about this subject but the question here, as in the in the Nadm al Habiru, in the Bait uh, 152, the question: What is miracle in the Quran? What is the miraculous part in the Quran? If you think of the Quran, if you're going to implement the three conditions of the i'jaz, but in the part of the Quran that is mu'jizah, this is a, is, is a good topic for all of you, mashallah, to that we study, and I will take my time to read more details about this subject. Because there's this uh, movement uh, especially in our time, we started like a few years ago, or like more like two uh, two decades or more, uh, about Al-I'jaz al-Qur'ani. Al-I'jaz al-Qur'ani is all restricted and limited in the f scientific facts related to I'jaz. And that's not the I'jaz. It's beautiful to say these things like that, but sometimes it's either over-stressed, they really stress some of the ayat, to try to fit it with some scientific facts or discovery or invention said, look, this is in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it 1400 years ago. And then when another theory come up with its justification, then you will find like, okay, so you said like a few years ago, this is what goes, and that theory actually is invalid now. They said, actually, uh, when you go back to the ayah and they give you another interpretation. Which is really, there's a lot of amazing thing in that field. There's a lot of amazing thing. But can we say the ijaz of the Quran is limited to the scientific facts mentioned in the Quran? The scientific facts mentioned in the Quran is not the Quran. Because one of the elements which is very, uh, you know, um, obvious, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, saying, I mean, I've been watching, you know, we shared it with some of the youth about the crack of the earth, the bounce into the space. And they tell you this is was discovered in 1926 and things. Like Allah talking about why. He is the creator of the universe. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as facts that are evident but not evident for people till it comes a time to know, you know, things how it happened. And the unseen is very relative. Unseen is relative. What was unseen 200 years ago, today is something very normal. Right? I mean, uh, it's very amazing to dial a number and talk to someone overseas, and it's very clear. Right? 
Can 200 years ago, people, they think that is be happening? It's not. The, all the details that they have now with the, with the microscope, like looking in the body of the person, it was unseen before. And this unseen is relative. Till we come to the day of judgment, people when they say, well, it was unseen. Jahim or hellfire, it wasn't seen, it's not gonna become something is seen. Hmm? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk and he's obvious in, in a way of the believers, why? Because he's the creator of the universe. Then we say how many of the scientific facts mentioned in the Quran to have the whole ijaz only centered and restricted to scientific facts. Type. Ayat like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna a'tainaka al-kawth. Where the scientific facts here? Ya ayu ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Where the scientific facts? Wa ladhani ya'tiyani ya minkum fa'aduhuma. And those who commit such a thing, so, you know, aduhuma. Just follow them, reprimand them, etc. Fa'in taba wa aslaha, etc. Where the scientific facts? So, subhanAllah, the miraculous nature in the Qur'an is not related to challenge of science because the Qur'an is not a book of science. It's a book of guidance. It's a book of life. It's a map for the whole life. It's a constitution. As he's saying here in the uh, uh, Bayt 152, أن القرآن معجز Every ayah in the Quran is mu'jiza, open for challenge. Bilafdihi, by his terms. Wa shar'ihi, by his laws. Wa ilmihi, by its knowledge. Wa ta'juzu al-uqulu an mithalihi. And every intellect, every mind will be incapable to produce such a thing. وَصُورَةٍ وَالْعَشْرِ مِنْ مَقَالِهِ So surah is in Surah Al-Baqarah, challenged with one surah. Or ten surah are the same. The whole Qur'an, ten surah of the Qur'an, one surah of the Qur'an, no one will be able to produce it. Therefore, as a conclusion, a statement, and then, insha'Allah, we'll go into details because this is, I believe, is important subject. I will tell you the, uh, all the ayat that the challenge is open to the Day of Judgment uh, with the name of the ayat, surah and the ayat, number of the ayat. يقول هنا المصنف ومدار الإعجاز الذي رافقه التحدي. By the way, in the notes that I, I share with you in the beginning of the class, the notes of science of the Quran, it has all this part. It has all this part about the إعجاز, and it has in detail, mashallah. مدار الإعجاز الذي رافقه التحدي إنما كان أسلوب القرآن. So the مدار الإعجاز, the field of the إعجاز in the Quran. Is the composition of the Quran, the eloquence of the Quran, the illustration and clarification of the Quran, illustration of ahkam, illustration of parable, of example. Therefore, it includes every ayah of the Quran. The way it composes, the balagha, the eloquence, illustration, clarification, all of that is the miracle of the Qur'an. Nuzmun wa bayan. An-nuzmu, how, or an how you put it together, composition. Al-bayan, it has the balagha, the eloquence, it has the clarification, and the obvious end and high level of illustration. Uh, in the meanings.
Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 88, challenge to bring like the whole Quran. Ten surahs is Surah Hud, Ayah 13 and 14. قُلْ فَأْتُ بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَتْ Challenge, open challenge for one surah is in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 23. And this open challenge to be in the second page of the Quran. And the amazing challenge uh, look what Allah said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Baqarah. Ayah twenty three. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our service, this is the introduction, right? The introduction. Allah talking about the believers and then about the kuffar, the three categories of people, believers, non-believer, and hypocrite, people who have disease in their heart between. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, the ayah, O oh, mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you that you may become righteous. So this is the introduction of the Quran. After that, the challenge opened. He said, And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then produce a surah, the like thereof. And call upon your witnesses other than Allah if you should be truthful. Clear this one. Now, listen to the next one. But if you do not, but if you cannot, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire whose fuel is man and stones. Big challenge. This is in the beginning of the Quran. It's not like you say, I'll, I'll give you, read half of the Quran, then I'll tell you. This is in the beginning. قَالَ فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا If you cannot do it, and you will never be able to do it. So, the one who speaks cannot be the Prophet No one in his book, I mean, can be powerful, a wise person, or can be tiring with a lot of power, he will never dare to do such a thing. He said, and you will not be able to do, especially when you're talking about an intellectual challenge that is going to continue after the life of the person. It's not something that he holds like a castle in his hand or a town under his, and his, under his power. We're talking about something that is going to come later and later. People, you don't know how many wise people they're going to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, come in the future. How many people, scholars, said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَن تَفْعَلُ You will never, never be able to. And this is, subhanAllah, this area for the believers. Help us, subhanAllah, to boost your iman to its utmost. Because no one can say such a thing except the one who has the full confidence in what he's saying. Actually, one atheist, he, when he read the Quran without any preconceived idea, he accepted Islam from the first ayah of the Quran. What the first ayah says. Sometimes when you hear the story, it helps you more to think and reflect on the book. What the first ayah says in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ أَلِفْ الْأَمِيرِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ This is the book about which there is no doubt a guidance for those conscience of Allah. No doubt 
in the guidance. He said, he's a writer, by the way. He said, when I write an essay or paper, I will review it a million times. Then I always alter it, change it, correct it, change my mind. After maybe if I come after one week, I look at it and they want to structure. You know, he said, this book from the beginning, he said, there's no doubt in it. It's amazing. No one can say such a thing. No one, I mean, even if someone is like master all the, you know, the, the keys of the language, he will not be able to say such. And then he say, in it, the guidance. So when you think about it, no one can, I mean, a normal person, wise person, he will not dare to say such a thing. Therefore, the only who can say it is the creator of this universe. Okay, we'll stop here. Inshallah, we'll continue uh, some of the facts about the area that I would like to share with you, Inshallah. And if you read those papers that I have shared with you about the Ulum uh, al-Quran, it has the chapter of the Ijaz, and you will have uh, many of the things that we've been talking about. Uh, one of the uh, issues that uh, I would think we need to go through it is um, some of the saying of some sect deviated um, that uh, we'll, we'll explain next time because it's good to see some of the uh, wrong uh, way of belief in such a thing so to understand how to answer that and then we we'll come to conclusion and after that we'll go to the subject of the parable and the example of the Quran inshallah uh, and they will continue also with part of the tafsir Yeah. Yeah, I can, of course. So the first ayah of the whole Quran is in Surah Al Isra. Ayah eighty-eight. Surah Al Isra, Ayah eighty-eight. This is a challenge to produce like the Quran. Ten ayahs, ten surahs. Challenge of Surah Hud, ayah 13 and 14. And challenge, open challenge to produce only one surah is Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 23-24. Two, three minutes, and we'll start our tohfa, insha'Allah. And uh, let you go today if you want. Uh, we'll pray uh, more the adhan at 8.33. So we'll pray at, you know, 8.45, and then you can pray and leave, insha'Allah. You didn't get it? But you get it by email, no? No? Yeah, can you check with the brother Ibrahim? If not, I will I will send it again. Yeah. We finish it. Oh no no. I want I want through the qiraat if you remember we give one by one that's what I refer to. And then in the first part we already uh, checked we already studied it. So we review part of it and then I I went through all the qira and the sanad of the qira from the book. So we already uh, went through it but you don't have to read it. If you, we have like the part of the qira the 10 with their narrators that would be enough so the introduction it was concerning the ulum al-quran but the rest of the book uh, it has different subjects so the first hundred page will be great because it has a summary of what we have done up to qira'at but we did it for two classes if you remember yeah 
So yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna be on the test only to no, no, it's not because uh, the name of the Quran of Aima, we want for someone if he need them, he, he has them as a reference to know. But we study them for us to know, but not to memorize. But whoever who's gonna read the Qira'ah, he has to know them. But it will be, for example, you know, what will be in the test, the fact that how the compilation of the Quran happened and how, where it's going to spread and, you know, the way it spread, things like, you know, to know. But as a student of knowledge, to know how the Quran was transmitted, the Quran is, is one uh, factor, you know, for, for that. And then to make the difference between the seven letters and the Qira'at, that's what will be in the test. Things different like that, so subtle thing, but not names. You have uh, the open documents. Sir. Taib, we are at page, uh, okay, page uh, 63, from at tuhfa Uh, we are finishing بعد بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. We are still in the chapter of the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the requirement of the love of Allah, the proper etiquette of the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and how to uh, help uh, one understand the meaning of the love of Allah, and um, and also to make the difference between. Um, the intellectual love, if we can call it this way, and and the complete love. The hadith of Umar that we mentioned last time that he said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than anything else except myself. And he said, no, the Prophet Sallallahu to make him understand that the love of the Prophet need to be greater than anything else. And that's how we explain it to be an intellectual love. What mean intellectual love? It's like you believe that your love to the Prophet greater than anything else is, is the path of your success. It's a belief. Because you say, you know, uh, someone, um, he believed that without water he'll die. Then he's believed that the water, he need to have water all the time to drink the water. You know, that's, that's a conclusion, a belief. The same thing, you're saying the love of the Prophet Sallallahu it might not be for someone who's new in Islam or someone who does not know the Prophet Sallallahu to tell him, you know, one of the conditions of the Iman to love the Prophet more than you do yourself. It would be difficult for a person. But we're saying, no, there's actually the love that is required from you as, as, as a base of Iman is to believe and to understand it. Do you believe that the Prophet Sallallahu is guiding you to your success more than yourself if you follow your own way. You say, yes, I believe. So therefore, your love to the Prophet Sallallahu is the love of his way, which is mean the love of your own self. Therefore, loving the Prophet Sallallahu is really loving and honoring your own self. Because people, they love their own self, they become selfish, egoist and they actually uh, speeding the pace toward their corruption and their uh, destruction. Loving the Prophet Sallallahu it is the proper way to love oneself. Say, do you love yourself? He said, yes, then love the Prophet Sallallahu it's better for you. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu being given uh, this, subhanAllah, um, being the role model, 
So he is the best who lived the life in the way of Allah, the best just, the best moderate, the best balanced, the best worshiper, the best father, the best husband, um, the best friend, the best commander, commander, the best grateful to Allah, the best servant, the best who makes sujood, everything. Therefore, when, when you look, and that's, you know, someone, for example, he will think like, like those companions who came to the Prophet Sallallahu or the Prophet heard about them and he called them. Some of them he want to fast the whole time and the other one he want to pray the night and he will not sleep. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is not the Sunnah. And whoever who does other than my way, he's not uh, one of my followers. To understand that the best worship is also to sleep. The best fasting is to eat also. And the best life of, you know, of dedication to the goodness is also to have a family, to have a household. So that balance for a normal person, he will not be able to attain it, to achieve it, to find it as a whole complete structure. Because if he's going to do only worship, he's going to violate and and really be unjust with everyone else. He require him or they need his help. They need his, uh, his you know, to be, fulfill his responsibility toward them. And this is the love, subhanAllah, that is required then the more a person come close to understand, to study about the Prophet Sallallahu that's how the love is being embellished and completed. And then someone, subhanAllah, he find his, 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 all his heart is all, subhanAllah, driven toward the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is difficult for people to, to love, uh, you know, the Prophet if they do not know him. And unfortunately, the majority of this Ummah, they don't know their Prophet. They don't know. But at least we say, believe from the fact that loving the Prophet is truly loving yourself better than you do love yourself on your own. So this is, you know, as the scholar, they explain the hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And then, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم آية الإيمان حب الأنصار وآية النفاق بغض الأنصار. Other aspect that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned in the love of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, love of his Prophet, is the love of those who loves Allah and his messenger. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Ansar, the Prophet is pleased with them. The Ansar is those who gave, you know, did all this amazing action of, you know, welcoming the Prophet, hosting the Prophet and the Muhajireen. So their love is an obligation. Why? Because they following the Prophet, there were people, subhanAllah, who, who did the good. Therefore, the love of righteousness make the person to love the righteous. That's why the Prophet, sallallahu he, he specified for us, he said, Hubbul Ansari, Ayatul Iman, the sign of the belief is the love of the Ansar. And the sign of hypocrisy is the dislike or the hate of the Ansar. It's not possible for someone who believes in, uh, in the Allah in the day of judgment to hate the Ansar. And this is, subhanAllah, there is uh, an aspect in the heart. The heart, uh, it cannot contain conflicting things. If it has conflicting things, so someone is lying on his own self. If you say, I love the Prophet Sallallahu but I hate the Ansar, he said, you do not love the Prophet. Because it's not possible. Two things conflicting each other cannot come together. And that's what the Prophet said. So the coherence uh, in one's heart is one of the, subhanAllah, of the, I mean, is an obligation. If not, someone is really, uh, it's more hypocrisy than Iman. 
وقال علي رضي الله عنه إنه لعهد النبي الأمي إلي أنه لا يحبني إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضني إلا منافق and Ali radiallahu ta'ala he said this is an oath that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me, shared with me that whoever who loved me as Ali he is a believer, whoever who hates me he is a munafiq how can someone you know hates Ali radiallahu ta'ala and the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the first who accepted iman from the from the from the youth at that time and the one who who did all the striving and all the you know uh, the knowledge he has and everything and the prophet ﷺ is pleased with him the prophet ﷺ granted him a lot of uh, task and honored him and then someone will hate him say so say what is the reason you know because subhanallah the love has a purpose and it has a validation justification as the hate. So you say, I love the Prophet Sallallahu but Ali say, what is your problem with Ali? What is the reason? So the reason will uncover the motive of this person. So that motive make me say, then truly you don't love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hmm? قال للعباس والذي نفسي بيده لا يدخلون الجنة حتى يحبوكم لله ولقرابته يعني بني هاشم he said uh, in this hadith this is حب أهل البيت حب the love of the family of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said they will not enter paradise that they will love you because of my relationship to you because the believers among the family of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are the closest to the Prophet so the one who honor and love the Prophet Sallallahu he has to honor them and love them. And you see there's no arrogance here. There's no like, uh, uh, you know, way to prefer. Is this that humility to Allah, that humbleness. I mean, the true, sincere, authentic, and truthful love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, you know, will have as a result, a consequence, natural, a consequence to love his family. To not make separation between the Prophet and his companion. All of them, they've been striving in the same way. All of them, they love the Prophet. All of them, they honor the Prophet. All of them, they raise for the good. And more than that, Allah gave them, Allah is pleased with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, granted them, you know, paradise. He gave them the husna. The husna is paradise. Those who accepted, they follow the Prophet before the Fath and those after the Fath. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, are not equal those who fought and then, you know, spanned in the sake of Allah before the Fath. من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا. and then Allah said قال وكل وعد الله الحسن and all of them Allah promised them the husna. the husna is paradise. those before فتح and after فتح. there's one big issue that people today they fall into it. one of the very big issue. that the comparison sometimes when people they read about noble great people like that in the past. The uh, always the mentality is to look at them is like we look at the people today. You see, so people they said, oh, they were people and we are people. They were rigel and we are rigel. It's not the same at all. It's not. Why it's not? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said they have one heart like everyone has. Yes, they do. They were human beings as we are. Yes, we are. What is the difference? It's the environment. The environment to change the person. I mean, if the environment can has an impact on the color, on one's even anatomy. <laughs> I mean, the people who lived in Africa, they don't look like the people who live in Europe because of their environment if we go study in the beginning. The same thing, the environment of spirituality, when it differs, it becomes you have different people. 
the unique environment of the time of the Prophet ﷺ cannot reproduce it in any other time for one unique, simple reason. They used to live while the Qur'an is coming down. Um Mubaraka, when she was, uh, you know, crying, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and she got the visit of the Prophet, she, called, she was the nurse of the Prophet sallallahu They visited her, Abu Bakr wa Umar. They told her, why you are crying? I mean, the Prophet sallallahu he's in a better place. He's a Rafiq al-A'la. He's the messenger of Allah. Is there a better place than to be with Allah? She said, it's not my issue. It's not the Prophet sallallahu that he passed away. Said, my pain and all my, you know, mourning is about the Qur'an. It stopped coming down after the Prophet is gone. Yeah. You know what it means, the Qur'an, to come down? You enter the masjid and here there's a new ayat. I mean, it's like you live with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about Ihsan. This is like, <laughs> you know, top Ihsan. That means someone, he will commit, he'll, he'll do something at the market and he knows that he did wrong. He will be coming to the masjid scared. Maybe the Prophet he's going to recite an ayah that it was about him. It's a totally different life. So those who, you know, are um, kind of uh, saying defamation and lies about the Prophet and those people, you know, why, you know, the people, they can lie, they can say, you know, that's the problem that, uh, you know, that perversity in the heart who blind people to see the realities. Today, in all the studies, in all the studies, even, uh, you know, in poetry, in, in philosophy, in, in history, the first thing they study is the environment. Some sentences, when they analyze it, say, oh, according to the spirit of that time, they mean this. Because terms are used in different contexts, in different culture, in different state of mind. So you cannot say a term, for example, I mean, say, oh, they're saying the truth. You say, what did mean the word the truth in that society? It's different. So you cannot think, take things as granted. Okay. So this is very important, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to specify especially when we're talking about the Prophet Sallallahu his family, talking about the companions, the one Allah Ta'ala alayhim. And that's why Ahlul Hadith, they say that tabaqa is tabaqatu al-udul. That generation, if you come to a Hadith, when you reach one of the companions, that's it. It's sahih. Why? Because it tells you the companion is darajatul udul the, the, the uh, daraja of al uh, uh, those who have integrity, truthfulness, and everything. Why? Because of the environment that they lived. The environment. Even though they have hypocrisy, hypocrite among them, kuffar, those hypocrites, their heart is blind, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. But those who were with the Prophet, sallam, Allah opened their heart and He granted them His pleasure, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقد روى حديث عن ابن عباس مرفوعا أنه قال أحب الله لما يغذوكم به من نعمه وأحبوه وأحبوني بحب الله وأحب أهل بيتي لأجلي look what the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also this is an intellectual way look he said love Allah love Allah he give you like this is for the very simple people you know people who still you know struggling with their faith Say, love Allah for what He given you from gifts. Taif. And love me for the fact that Allah loves me. وَأَحِبُّونِي بِحُبِّ اللَّهِ Allah said, I love the messenger. So love me because of the love of Allah to me. And love my family because of me. It's very simple. Say, look at the gift that you have. Don't you love Allah for it? He said, yes, I love Allah. Okay, now, 
Allah loved the messenger of Allah. Will you not love him because Allah loves him? He said, I should, yes. He said, do you know, then love the prophet? He said, yes. Then love his family because of the prophet. It's, subhanAllah, it's, it's very logic. <laughs> now, Allah's love to his servant is different. Totally different topic. The love of Allah to his servant is depends on the level or like their they rank in the level of the servitude. So climbing to get the love of Allah, the ranks are the ubudiyah to Allah. So there's no ranks of nobility, of name, of uh, status, of, uh, of money, no such a thing. The only way to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasure, the only way to get to Allah's love is through one way, ubudi, servitude. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved Ibrahim, he said, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَهِيمَ خَلِيلٍ Allah took Ibrahim as a friend. Khalil. And Khalil is more like the, the word friend. It really is, is more than that. Khalil is, is high degree of love. But Al-Khillatu, al if we call it friendship, which is a type of high level of love, it is a rank of servitude. So al khillatu is not like people friend. What it means, friend? is a rank of servitude. You have the righteous, you have the shaheed, you have the siddiq, you have al muhaddith, and then you have al khalil, and then you have the abd, the pure servant. That's why Allah complimented his servant Muhammad by saying servant. Subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi, the one who took his own servant to a night journey. Abdi. And you see the hair is like my servant. Allah said, My servant, Abdihi. Eh? That's the highest level. Waqala Allah ta'ala yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. He loved them and they love him back. And the amazing part when you read the ayah, this Allah start by saying he loving them and they love him back subhanallah wa qala allah subhanahu wa ahsinu be good be good doers indeed allah loves al muhsini wa aqsitu be just indeed allah loves al muqsitin فَأَتِمُّ إِلَيْهِمْ عَهْدَهُمْ إِلَى مُدَّتِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Fulfill the covenant that you have, you know, agreed upon with them. Indeed, Allah loves the muttaqin, the pious. So the believer, if you want Allah to love you, look what Allah loves and be in among one of them. Allah loves the muhsini, be muhsin. Allah loves the just one who deal with justice, muqsid, be muqsid. Allah loves the muttaqin, be muttaqi. So the love of Allah of Allah will not be granted to you unless you will be in one of these categories. Muhsin, Muqsit, Muttaqi. And that's how you get in the level of the Ubudiyah. And my servant keep drawing himself near to me with the voluntary action till I love him. So till it is, subhanAllah, a journey to gain the love of Allah to you. قال إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيل صفا كأنهم بريان الله loves those who fight in his sake that kind of a structure block together united بلا من أوفى بعهده والتقافة إن الله يحب المتقى الله loves the pious one etc. This is the people that Allah loves so you know where to be for Allah سبحانه وتعالى to love you. وَأَمَّا الْأَعْمَالُ الَّتِي يُحِبُّهَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى 
من الواجبات والمستحبات الظاهرة والباطنة فكثيرة معروفة When you come to the deeds they are you know, with no count you know, the deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love, love those deeds allows those who act you know, with those deeds وهم المؤمنون أولياء الله Those are the believers that are the friend of Allah and those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects وهذه المحبة حق كما نطق بها الكتاب والسنة Just finish this page and we start إن شاء الله So we can uh, طيب Just finish this paragraph because you're going to start the last part It will be the paragraph uh, continuing in the next page طيب قال والذي عليه وهذه المحبة حق كما نطق بها الكتاب والسنة This love it is true It's not a metaphor. It's not uh, something that, you know, just emotion only. It's a true love between the servant and his creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِي عَلَيْهِ سَلَفُ الْأُمَّ وَأَئِمَّتَهَا وَأَهْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْحَدِيثِ وَجَمِيعُ, مشا... وجميع مَشَايِخِ الدِّينِ الْمُتَّبَعُونَ وَأَئِمَّةِ التَّصَوُّفِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَحْبُوبٌ لِذَاتِهِ مَحَبَّ حَقِيقِيَّةٍ بل هي أكمل محبة that all the أهل السنة والجماعة والحديث including everyone even the uh, متصوفة everything that all they have the consensus that Allah is loved for his own self because people they only love Allah through his gifts if there's no gifts they stop love وأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه نعم فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقذر عليه رزقه يقول ربي أنا <تصفيق> so those are wishy washy based on the gift that they receive the true believer they love Allah as Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Allah Allah is the self of Allah as Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in Surah Al-Baqarah 165 والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله. The most, uh, you know, among the people who are the the most who love Allah among His people are the believers. Are the believers. فنص الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرزقنا حبه. الله مرزقنا حبك وحبك وحب من يحبك وحب كل عمل صالح يؤتين به أو تحب وكل وحب كل عمل صالح يقودنا إلى حبك. Oh Allah grant us your love and the love of everything you love and the love of every righteous action that lead us to your love. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم. Have a great Ramadan. We'll be in contact with you for the exam. So it will going to be Saturday the 23rd and Ibrahim inshallah will give you all the details about that. It's going to be like uh, as we uh, multiple choice. Uh, easy one, but uh, for you to go review all what we have done, to refresh it, and then it will be easy for you to to get back when you need them, inshallah. So, jazakumullah khairan wa barakatuh.